Hello everyone, Chief Meteorologist Dan Scoff in the Weather Center on this Saturday evening and it was a little bit of a shaking awakening across northwest Arkansas and a good portion of the country as well felt the earthquake. Wanted to give you some information. We were able to analyze the information. We did a live update in the morning but I wanted to tell you a little bit more about it and also explain why your cats or dogs might have freaked out a little bit early before you even felt the shaking. So here's a little uh, video uh, ex explanation if you will on the earthquake so first of all some of the recent earthquakes you'll see the green and yellow colors yellow colors mean that these uh, earthquakes have happened within the last 12 hours obviously the big one was a 5.6 earlier this morning just before 7.03 a.m. 7.02 and 45 seconds was the exact time with a magnitude of 5.6 which ties as the strongest earthquake in Oklahoma's history which the previous one was on November 6 of 2011 the depth was about three miles deep so it was a fairly shallow quake that allowed it to spread over uh, a long uh, distance and was felt over a long distance Pawnee in fact was closest to the epicenter and there was some damage to some historical buildings also some uh, floors of a building inside collapsed while so the outside had some structural damage and there was some damage in Oklahoma as well so definitely some damage from this strong shaking and as we look at the distance this was felt a staggering over 700 miles as someone felt it in northeastern Arizona all the way northwest to Denver and Chicago as well as western Tennessee and Kentucky and all the way south into Houston and as we look at this map from the USGS US Geological Survey you can see those little blue uh, squares those are reports that people sent in saying they felt the earthquake. You can see it all the way in western Tennessee and Kentucky and all the way into Chicago as well. There's that dot that shows up uh, located in uh, northeastern Arizona and also that activity that's located over Chicago. So definitely some activity. Now I wanted to show you this. This was the seismic activity that popped up across the um, Oklahoma area and uh, eventually traveled into Hobbs State Park. In fact, as you look at this, Hobbs State Park showing that uh, seismic activity at right after 7.03 and about 20 seconds. This is 7.03 right here. Here's the 22nd line and right about that time, very strong shaking that continued quite some time. So you've got all the way through 13 seconds and about 10 seconds was the strongest shaking. But the seismograph or the helicorder did record that shaking for quite some time. So now I want to kind of explain the difference between the two waves that we felt. We felt what's called a P wave, which is a uh, primary wave. Now the animals are more sensitive to that. We kind of feel what's called the S wave. That's the rocking and rolling. So imagine if we were to take a slinky, if you will, I'll use my phone cord as this. So if we compress this, and it stretches out over an area that is the compression of the land now animals can feel that and it happens quite a bit before the actual earthquake then you have the secondary wave which is the rolling kind of like ro waves on a sea and so the rolling is what we really felt in the shaking that lasted um, oh, about over 10 seconds for us and even longer for Oklahoma. So I want to give you kind of an example of this. This is a, a diagram, an animation if you will, of that compressional wave called the P wave. Now the P wave happens before the S wave and it actually travels a lot quicker and you can see the direction of propagation. Now if we look at the S wave, this is the shaking that we felt and so literally like waves and ripples in the ocean when you throw a, a rock in a pond and you can see it spreading out in all directions if that pond is quiet. Uh, that's exactly what we had. Now, uh, John Lehman, a real good friend of mine and a basically genius, uh, did record this. Uh, did notice that the time right here, it's showing about 40 seconds uh, before the quake. So this line right here represents the P wave. You can see that little area. Now this red dot right here, you're going to see this shaking back and forth. So watch as I put this into motion. We put this, uh, we're about 40 seconds within the earthquake. There's that compressional wave. You can see that red dot shaking back and forth. So this is 40 seconds after the earthquake was felt in Oklahoma. Your cats are probably freaking out at this time. Your dogs are running around and you're like, what's going on? Why are you going so crazy? Notice we're about 60 seconds now after the quake. So 20 seconds after the uh, primary wave and here comes that S wave. Now watch this red dot shake back and forth. Look at the displacement that we had 
um, across the area you can see that instant uh, displacement so pretty impressive stuff there now that shaking was even stronger in Tulsa and obviously that wave reached a lot earlier here we are at 20 seconds and uh, there's that P wave that's being felt and then shortly after that which wasn't as long even less than 20 seconds here comes the S wave and watch the shaking on this now when you get really close to the epicenter you had some extremely strong shaking so there's that little uh, red dot right there that's popping up watch that shake back and forth look at that motion so that's what you were feeling a lot of north south motion of the land also a little bit of up and down that's why it kind of felt like you're on a roller coaster ride and uh, quite a bit of east and west shaking but if we go back to the area in gravit which is where this was recorded uh, you'll notice that it wasn't quite as much we'll go back here just a little bit in time you'll notice that there wasn't as much east and west uh, uh, motion that was felt and so the land kind of absorbed some of that energy hey you make sure you follow us on social media I did a live Facebook update on my meteorologist Dan Scoff page right after the earthquake happened also on Twitter I'm providing information uh, we, there have been quite a few aftershocks but I don't expect anything major was some damage in Oklahoma the weather's looking quiet so you got absolutely no concerns and of course the Razorbacks won so that's always good news as well so keep it here with your weather authority for the latest science and weather information